Hello, my name is Fran Sands. Welcome to myboxingcoach.com. Cool lesson for you today, the first of three actually. And it's about how to build, take from theory, great counter punching. So today we're going to work on some fundamentals that you need to understand. And then in the following two videos, we're going to bring that to life a little. Before we get started, if you haven't already, go and download my book, The Beginner Boxer Toolkit. Uh, that's 64 pages packed full of helpful information, the 10 essentials of building a home gym, the 10 core skills that you need, five building blocks of punching power, and four steps to creating real speed. Now, uh, there's a load of other stuff in there. Whatever reason you've chosen boxing on your journey, be it for fitness work or competition, it's a great book and uh, you can download that free at myboxingcoach.com. There will be a link at the end and there's a link down below. Right, let's get on to the learn and have a little look at this. This is the three fundamentals or my three fundamentals of great counter punching. Have a look at this. Right, three tips for counter punching. Tip number one, make your jab the very best it can be. All of the best counter punchers have a fantastic jab. And there's all kinds of things you can do with the jab. But at the most basic level, you should make sure that it works well. That it's clean, that there's no overcommitment. commitment um, So from there, you know, we maximise rotation. The elbow doesn't flare. Rotation, acceleration onto the target. Full rotation of the hip so that you're not losing a single centimeter not losing an inch you make maximize without over committing accelerate onto the target everything clean everything precise then of course as part of your as part of your well as part of the next point actually you can vary the speed and the power mostly the speed to help you Trigger, trigger an opponent to help you make something happen, which brings us neatly on to point number two. Don't wait. This popular misconception that great counter punches are like, you know, they, they, they stand around waiting for the opponent to do something. It's just wrong. You know, 90% plus of counter punches make something happen. The vast majority of the time, they initiate the engagement. They do not wait for the opponent to do something. So why do, what do I mean by not wait? Well, you in, can initiate the actual engagement with a punch. We just talked about the jab. Pop the jab out, you start in, engaging. But you're, engage, you're starting that engagement by throwing a punch. You can vary the, the speed of that jab. So you can throw full speed. Or you can just pop it out and that'll tease the opponent to do something. And then, of course, you've got the feints. Hand feints. Body feints. It's where you just almost a slip. Yeah? Trigger the opponent. Or foot feints. That's where you... You convince the opponent that you're coming in. It's almost like, I often call it a, a delayed arrival. That little step in, trigger the opponent, and then follow it through. So don't wait. Something I often say, boxing is a pressure business. If you're not punching, you should be fainting. And if you're not fainting, you should be punching. Remember that. And then the third aspect, of good counter punching or great counter punching work preset patterns certain punches work very well together when you combine them certain punches are likely to trigger a particular response what do i mean by that um so if i throw a hook to the body so if i'm there and i've worked in off the jab pop pop a hook into the body it can be fast, it can be slow, it can be whatever. Occasionally, that will cause an opponent to pull their elbows down slightly. 
leaving a very slight opening there. So, faint, jab comes, slip in, hook body, bang, big hook head. Because that hook to the body may have caused a response to the arm. So certain punches trigger certain responses. What about an uppercut? You aim an uppercut into someone's chest, where you, you turn it or that one, very often that may cause the person to kind of pull the head back as they see the uppercut coming. Pull the head back in the hope that it whizzes up here, misses the face. Well that, boom, bang, you bring the hook in after that. Take advantage, look to land a solid hook on the jaw. Certain punches work well together, they combine well. So work preset passages. Jab will often just bring a, a jab response. So remember that, work with that. You know, it's almost automatic that a boxer will respond to a jab with a jab. So jab, slip out, backhand. Jab, bang, bang. The opener might be there, might be an opponent, who when they throw a jab, this happens. Backhand drops a little. Jab, slip out, bang. One, two, three. Work preset patterns. Jab, same principle as that one, but we actually do an angled side step. One, two, three. One, push out, angle it, three. The jab brings a response, step out, fire back. That's with body movements, that's with foot movements. Hand defences, learn your hand defences and learn them well. Jab, block, jab. Jab, block, one, two, three. Block, block, parry, parry. Block, 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 block. Yeah, look through the target. Learn your hand defense as well. Why? Because when you block a punch, you know you're in range. Always fire back. Block, one, two, three. Right hand block, one, two, three. Always fire back. Get into the habit. Boom. With these little blocks, make sure they're, make sure they're good blocks. Don't reach out for a punch. Suicidal, that one. Don't reach out here to block a punch. One, two, one, two. Blocks and parries. If you're in range, you know you can land. If you can block, you know you can run, land your own punches. Three tips for great counter punching. Make the jab the best it can be. Don't wait, work preset patterns. Right, so there you go. The one I really want you to think about, or the one that's really relevant to us, is that thing about preset patterns and preset sequences. In our next video, I'm going to work on that with you, okay? You're going to get a load of stuff that helps you take that theory and put it into practice. It's all well and good being a theorist. We want practitioners. We want people who can, you know, do what they need to do in terms of skills to underpin, underpin a great fitness regime or to give them those skills for whatever reason they may need them, okay? Um, don't forget to download my book, The Beginner Boxer Toolkit. Otherwise, I will see you in the next video. Take care.